tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Okay, so for this week, um, if you notice, the title has, um, it's called Light in the Midst of a Pandemic Part 2. So why is it Part 2? If you've been following Making a Difference in Season 1, um, I actually did this um, certain episode where I invited um, organizations that were created during the pandemic. So there were around four, um, the ones that I invited in Season 1. And for today, um, I'm doing sort of the same thing, but um, yeah, I've invited um, people who pursued certain projects. Um, Especially, especially during this time that we're all going through the pandemic. So I have three with me today. So today we are going to be talking to different people and I'm really excited to get to know more about their initiatives and their projects. All right, so um, now we are going to start with Go Bike PH and they actually have an introduction video. So I want to play that first and then we'll get to talk to the founder and some of his colleagues. Kahit paano, nagbunga na rin yung aming mga sakripisyo. Nagiging inspirasyon na rin kami sa aming mga kapwa-kabataan. Mabuti, nagkaroon ng iski na ganyan. Napakaganda, mabait sila. Kasi, paano hindi ko masabing mabait? Naisipan nila ang servisyo sa mga matatanda at kayong mga bata. Binigyan kayo ng pagkakabalahan ninyo. Hindi kayo mapupunta sa mapapariwara sa anumang bisyo. Malayo ba ang paglalakbay na ito? Maraming pagpapadyak pa tungo sa isang ligtas, malusog at panatag na Pilipinas. Sa aking mga kapwa SK, kung gusto po ninyong magkaroon ng go bike sa inyong barangay, pag-usapan po natin. Lagi man naming sinasabi, ngunit totoo nga, na ang kahandaan at pagtugon sa sakuna ay tungkulin ng bawat isa. And we have today um, the founder, that's Edren Lanilo, together with the Go Biker duo Mecca and Dieter, D sorry, did I pronounce it right? Fernandez. Um, Hello. Hi everyone. Hello. Your name, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, okay. 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 16, 2019, um, napansin namin na marami nagbabike dito sa community namin. And then, um, upon checking back, marami din palang mga accidents, um, makikipot yung mga daan, ma malalayo yung, yung, yung vicinity, nung kabuuan ng barangay namin, malalayo yung distance, talagang barrio. And then, nung napansin ko yun na may maraming nagbabike, tapos ito yung problem ng community, pinag-jive ko po yung idea na yun, na what if gumamit tayo ng mga bikes to delivering healthcare services. That's why po na alam mo yun, na, na formulate namin yung project na Go Bike. So, yan. Okay, so kailan kayo na Um, started uh, last March 16, 2019. Um, we joined a competition in Unila Foundation through Ideas Positive. Um, uh, it's basically a project proposal contest. And then, uh, upon competing, naka-receive po kami ng grant uh, worth 100000 to implement our project. And then, Doon na po. So, nung nagkaroon kami ng grant, bumili kami ng ilang units ng bikes. And then, nag-training yung mga volunteers, yung mga bikers. And yun po. Uh, bisikleta na may volunteers na trained. Pag pinagsama mo, yun, sila yung magde-deliver ng healthcare services. And, well, nung wala pa pong pandemic noon, as in talagang, 
ano, ongoing yung training, ongoing yung uh, pagmo-monitor namin ng health ng mga kababayan namin, ongoing yung pag-first aid namin pag may na-accidente. And then here comes COVID. Biglang nag-stop and then parang ano na, nag-iba yung kwento ng ng bisikleta namin nung COVID na, na nag-adapt para kay paano makatulong pa rin kami in our very simple. I go biker duo. Kasi yun ang sabi sa akin, kayo ang go biker duo. So bakit nga ba? Ako, yan po kasi, no, ano po, bago kami na turuan na mag, mag-training, tapos yun, lagi na po kayo magkasama para magbigay po ng servisyo ng medical, tapos yun, natawag po kami na go by first day. Ah, okay. Okay, Pareho yung last name nyo sa akin eh. Pareho kayong Fernandez. So, baka magkapatid din kayo, no? Okay, sabi ko na natutulog tapos magpinsan po kami. Lagi po kami. Ah, okay. Okay, so as ano, as go biker duo, ano na yung mga na experience nyo na or um as uh, nag nag ano dito sa go bike project. May mga nakausap na ba kayo na oh nakakatu na sinabihan kayo na oh nakakatuwa naman salamat sa servisyon ninyo. So, may mga gano'n na ba kayong na-experience? Opo, yun po. Si Nanay, parang si Nanay Upin po, yun po, lagi po. Sinasabi yun kami na, oh, bata pa kayo is maraming, may alam na kayo para sa ano, sa mga ginagawa yung mga ganito. Tapos, yun, nakakatuwa na pinagsasabihin kayo ng gano'n. Tapos, ano, nakakatulong kami sa mga kapwa na through the religious sanitation at safety precaution na ginagawa namin ay nangyayari yung Go Bike Project Ronda Kalusugan program namin sa uh, safe at saka reliable na healthcare services na naaasahan ngayong pandemya. Okay, so sa tingin ko sa namin ngayon under GCP ba? Uh, ano yung quarantine status nyo now? Uh, yes ma'am, uh, under uh, GCQ na po, medyo maluwag na po. So that's why right now ay ano na actually nagkakandak kami ng training. Uh, nagte-train kami ng mga gusto pang maging go biker. Pero okay. Okay. ano pa rin 'yon? Sensitive pa rin 'yon sa COVID like dapat ano 'yon. May pina-follow po kaming guidelines para yung learnings ma- 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 makuha nila and at the same time safe sila. So eventually Ganun, ganun po yung run. Uh, dadami ng dadami na yung bikers na magsiserve dito sa aming community. In partnership with SKs. Kasi si SK yung nagpo-fund ng training namin. At si SK yung magbibigay ng equipment ng mga susunod ng mga kabataang Go Bikers. Ayan. So, ayan po sila yung Go Bike Project. Again, salamat, um, Edre, uh, Hec- Mecca, and Jinker. Um, sa pagpunta nyo well, pag-usap nyo dito sa making a difference so sana magkita-kita tayo eventually, ingat kayo dyan at ano uh, um, stay safe kayo, thank you, thank you. bye bye so, now we are gonna move on to uh, to the second project I have with me today, um, they are called Project Wi-Fi. So I have a very big team with me right now. Um, I'd like to call them on screen. We have David Magbanwa, Kay Santos, Lawrence Paraz, Pat Roma, Pichi Garcia, and Rafa Reyes. Okay, so we'll, ha- we'll wait for everybody to come on. Okay, is this everybody? Are we miss- I think we're missing Pat. Is she here today? This is she a, has a class. She has a class. Okay, got it. All right. So, <laughs> anyway, this is Project Wi-Fi. All right. Hi, you guys. How are Hello. You? Uh, we're good. good. <laughs> Great to um, meet you guys. Hi, good afternoon. So, I'm David Magbanwa. Um, I'm currently a third-year law student in the LSU. And I'm also working. I am a... Uh, teacher by profession. 
Uh, yes, so I teach uh, senior high school in a private school. Oh, nice. How long have you been teaching? Um, I've been teaching for five years. This is my fifth year already. Yeah. Well, now, okay, so we have a teacher and a law student. Thank you, David. Um, Thank you. Next, we have Kay Santos. Hi, everyone. I'm Kay. Um, I'm a recruiter by profession. And like David, I'm also a law student. So I'm a recruiter by day and then law student at night. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, sorry, did I hear that right? Marketer? You're in marketing? Um, Recruitment. Uh, recruitment. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um. So how long have you been in recruitment? Um. I think almost six years. Wow, okay, that's such a long time in recruitment. Okay, all right, thank you, Kay. And then below Kay, we have PC Garcia. Hi, PC. Hi, Erica. Um, I'm also a law student, just like David and Kay. Um, I'm currently employed in a non-bank financial institution. I'm into trust banking and investment services. So I've been working for eight years. Oh, okay. So if we need um any tips on investment, can we go? Can we can we go to you <laughs> for that? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? All right. Thank you, Peachy. And then beside Peachy, we have Rafa Reyes, who is the co-founder of Project Wi-Fi. Hi, Rafa. Hi, Paul. Um, hi, I'm Rafa. <laughs> I uh, I graduated from a uh, university in the United States, actually in 2018, and um, and then right after I got directly involved into uh, my family corporations and work now working now in the financial department of it, and I am also now a third year law student, just like uh, PC David and Jake. Okay, all right. So I think all of you here are law students. No? Thank you, Rafa. Yeah. To meet you Thank and you. um last but not the least the one below me the man is lawrence Paras. hi lawrence hi so again uh, a third year law student uh, i'm a cpa uh, i do my solo practice ser- providing services for taxes and accounting so i do my own uh solo practice Wow, okay. All right, so um, this is the team of Project Wi-Fi. So to my viewers out there, if you have any questions, by the way, please feel free to comment um, and we are going to try to get your questions up here. Okay, so I realize now you're all law students. Is this how Pro Project Wi-Fi was started? A bunch of um, law students who just came up with the idea? I'm just guessing. <laughs> Uh, yes, actually, um, the project started because when Philippines, uh, well, when Metro Manila was placed on lockdown around mid March, um, we were all affected by it directly because our classes had to shift um, online. Um, so we were also at a loss on how to proceed with our studies. So after a few weeks, um, online classes resumed after a few adjustments. And um, even if we're all working already and we're studying at a private university, most of us, most of our classmates also experience, you know, um, difficulty attending classes because it because of um, internet access. So we realize that if this is happening to us, how much more to other students in the Philippines who are in um, a much difficult financial situation because of um, the pandemic. So we wanted to adopt scholars at first from our own personal funds um, as a barcada, because um, all of us are, bar- are in one barcada. So we wanted to adopt scholars. And when you we were looking for beneficiaries, we had more volunteers who wanted to donate also so we wanted to bridge the gap between donors and those who need it that's why we decided to go big or go home and launch project Mm wi-fi as a nationwide donation drive to help um students across the philippines uh for donations we have our uh web uh, website that they can visit and our facebook page so for our website it's uh project projectwifi.com.ph while our Facebook page is uh, can you help me guys uh, facebook.com slash 
<laughs> project project wifi. Wifi. <laughs> 2020 wala na 2020 so they can search us there uh, we have our own uh post regarding donations they can actually message us as well uh we have a uh, place um response or reply um in in our chat or if they could ask for donate uh, how to donate there's a auto generated reply for them to to access so um that's it okay so how are your donations so far um were you able to um, reach out na to those students in need of wi-fi for our donors um we've been collectively having um, most individuals and corporate donors for the uh for our donees uh the applications that we have received ranged from places uh all throughout the philippines so nationwide uh we can't really identify whether we've tapped all all sectors already but uh I think the trend of ha- of our applicants or our application for for the four batches already right now, uh, there's been a growth in awareness, which uh, hopefully means that uh, we're reaching actually the uh, those students that are. We had 300 here. new beneficiaries for the fourth batch, and then we're also currently. Um, processing several applications for the subsequent batches um so uh we really planned for this to become a long-term um project and not just something that would last in the pandemic and online setting so uh, we actually have some initiatives that we already thought of which are also related to the same advocacy so it's also still related to education um Although I cannot um, discuss the specifics yet, uh, but uh, we we already have plans and talks with some partnerships as well, so that we can cater to more causes and to more um, students um, nationwide. Okay, great. I'd like to uh, add something yeah. also. Sure. Um, so, like we all know that like um, many Filipino households like can't afford. Uh, stable internet connection and like even those with access to the internet um, they don't um, like the speeds of these internets is very uh, volatile so like our efforts are initially devoted to uh, essentially developing some kind of plan to, for institutional resilience and uh, academic continuity amidst this One, pandemic I I, I, I'm ins- I I got really inspired with um Project Wi-Fi. So, congrats again on launching Project Wi-Fi, and I wish you all the best with this. And I hope I get to meet you guys um, in person. <laughs> that was, that sure. was after the pandemic. Yeah, after, as yes. long as you know, <laughs> fine. Then yes, thank you guys. Thank you, David, Kay, Peachy, Rafa, and Lawrence. Um, I wish you all the best and stay safe, you guys. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Making a Difference. My name is Erica, and um, if you are just tuning in right now, I actually interviewed two teams um, of two certain projects. So the first project we had was Go Bike. Um, they would. They are trained to help out. Um, they they do um, um, basic life support um, and um, other health uh, I'm sorry health related um, trainings and they use their bikes to re to go to their um, fellow ones in their communities to to just you know help them out um, even just by getting their blood pressure. Um, so yeah, so that's Go Bike, and then there's Project Wi-Fi. Uh, Project Wi-Fi, the man, they focus on um, promoting the education of the students. So you know how we're all entering the new normal, and students um, are doing their schoolwork online. So you can donate to them, and 
So it's basically like you're sponsoring a kid. Um, so you donate to them, and then they will be the one giving the um, the pocket Wi-Fi to the students. So those are the two projects that I've had on today on making a difference. And now we have one more. Um, the last but not the least, I would like to introduce Camille Dowling. She is the owner of Pop Bori Popsicle Shop. So, hi Camille, are you there? Hi Erica, thanks for having me. Thank you also for coming um, to the show. Okay, so I'm I'm sure people are wondering. Okay, why does Erica have um, Camille on the show? She's an owner of a popsicle shop, so there must be a story behind all of this. And I'm actually really excited to hear um, your story. Um, actually, Pop Bori's story. So, um, um, the store has been open about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, when the shelter started, about a year and a half to two years in. Um, so it was about March 19, a few days after um, President Duterte announced the lockdown. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we did was we, we closed our business and then we basically, well, see our business, we sell popsicles. It's called Pop Brain. It sells popsicles and bread and burritos. Mm-hmm. And um, often we don't sell every single piece of bread. So at night we would give it to our, our homeless clients that are around our community. So we had mm-hmm. kind of a relationship with them. And when the lockdown began, um, well, we thought, you know, what about them? Because, you know, the president keeps saying you guys got to wash your hands and wash your face, but they don't have access to a sink. Mm-hmm. So... We thought we'd just open our little store and we'd close, basically it won't be open for sale. We just open it to them. And then the night before, we passed around flyers and said that they can come to an overnight shelter. So it was designed as an overnight shelter. Um, they would come at 6 p.m., like around 5 to 6 p.m. Um, and then it would be like we had big signs that said, Tulog, Ligo, Laba. Uh, <laughs> and kain, right? So it's just those four things. Kain, tulog, ligo, laba. So um, we passed flyers out to them. And then the first night, we had about nine people. And then it just steadily increased. And by the time we got shut down, which was on March 28th, we had the night before 72 people. So we were really blessed because we were building a three-story building in the back of our little store. Mm-hmm. And we fit a lot of really wonderful people helped us finish the floor. So once we were able to finish the floor, then we had a lot of room for about 70 people to come um, sleep about one meter apart. Um, um, so they came. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Where is your store located? So it's in Camias, Quezon City. Um, um, and it's like, I don't know, 200 meters from City Hall, Quezon City okay. Hall. Um, All right. Okay, so yeah, we have photos. Okay. Yeah, so so yeah, so that's our little store, and we mm-hmm. just put little signs up. And those that was the first night. Um, that's Rika on the left, and 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 Rika's husband. Um, okay. So in the first night, there was just nine of them. We had a lot of room. Okay. okay. <laughs> so those were actually for the seniors because we also we got a really a lot of donations. So we made some boxes for some seniors, and then of course when we got shut down on March twenty eighth. When our um, barangay shut us down due to breaking two rules, which was social distancing. And they have a, a rule called stay at home rule where mm-hmm. only one person was supposed to leave the house um, mm-hmm. at a time. And because we hosted 70 people, then in the morning, 70 people left um, so that we could clean and prepare mm-hmm. for the next day. So due to those two rules, um, okay. they shut us down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh- all right. So this is outside the shop. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yeah. And actually, that's just on the first night because what happened was after a while, um, when the numbers, like after a few nights, it got, of course, it's a lot of people. So to, for safety, we had different stations. So they had a station. As mm-hmm. soon as they entered, we had a fever check station. We had a foot wash station. And then yeah. everyone that was coming in had to shower and we also had a bag check (laughs) station where they put all their things and they get a number and then that's what they use to eat and then to sleep so um because there's just too many people and we had to make sure everybody was safe um that entire area got turned into a station area um after a few days 
Mm-mm. Okay, I see, I see. All right, do we have one more photos? Okay, is that you? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> that is me. I'm very tall. I'm like towering over everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this is you um, volunteering as well, right? Yeah, we have a really great guy. His name is Kuyachar, who um, is part of like a fruit business one street from us. And so when fruit falls on the ground and SM doesn't buy it, we got it. We had it for the shelter. <laughs> so that's fruit from them. <laughs> you know, um, it's it's a problem that you know, we in our community, we've been dealing with. So what we're doing now is we're fundraising to add a floor on the right hand, so around the right hand part, Mm. um, to add a separate floor there, a second floor that would be um, slabbed over and double decks worth good for 70 people. Um, So that's the goal. That's what we're fundraising for right now because, Uh um, because we know that at the end of this, you know, they're at the circle and a lot of people, Siguro, like tonight is a Saturday and um, today is a feeding day. So we we host about 59 at the circle. Over here at the store, about 35 have been coming, give or take. And then we have three clusters that we feed. We have the one in Camias, um, we have Aurora, and we also have Qmart. So mm-hmm. we're really recognizing that it's not it's one it's not going to go away and two they currently are still very unsafe mm-hmm. and hungry yeah. um so um we want to really prepare a place wherein they can come for the night designed as an overnight shelter they can have a good rest have a good meal and then go back out and battle in their lives um and also we also want a place where we can help them with the most basic things because we're really that we're realizing that even just having an id or a birth certificate um is so essential in them getting a job you know, people say why don't they get jobs well you know when you don't have 800 pesos to spend on a postal id you can't even apply you can't even enter the door at a job you don't have your high school college diploma you can't even enter the door so such simple things um, will really make a difference. And we're really lucky because we have Mayor Joy has been very supportive. We have Congressman Allen that are very supportive. So, and our Kagaw, Kagaw Julius is also very supportive. So we have a lot of people that um, want to see this project through and um, we really were counting on their help and um, in, in doing these things and just improving in little ways, you know, a lot of us think it's so grand, but it's really not that grand. We just want to make their life better a little bit today. That's yeah. all. And the yeah. thing is, they are part of us. And so we have to like, as a community, um, we have to get rid of this very old and tired narrative. Nah, homeless people are lazy, they're criminals, they're addicts. Because if you really come out and meet them, they're not. Um, of course, there are a few. Um, but demonizing them with their stories of lack of of their lack of success and their failures, it's really counterproductive. If you meet them, you listen to their stories, you know, they are like you and they are like me. And this old narrative na hindi sila one of us um, doesn't help. Maybe maybe we can consider a different approach. Um, and the approach is, no, we listen to them and we listen to their very true, their very complex stories um, of their marginalized communities and we can better support the, the efforts that they already have and they are already making to get themselves out of this life. Um, and if we do consider our, them to be ours, then they are our responsibilities. Diba? If they're not ours, then we just let them go. So we don't have to take care of them. We don't have to look out for them. We don't have to think na getting an ID is important. But if they're ours in our little communities, um, you know, then we can make a difference in our own way. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, they're still they're still people. You know, they, they still go through the same we have we have everything gcash um bpi we also have a paypal account if you're not in the country and um let us know and you know if if you don't have cash even if you just have your time come and serve on one evening we would love that or if you have extra ulam you know lala move it to us okay. um on an evening even that is 
so much or a pre-loved item, pre-loved slippers, shoes or clothes that means so much to us. And um, let us know. We have so many ways that you can be part of this um, initiative and part of this community um, without even having, you know, uh, we know how hard times are. So if you don't have cash, come in, come in and all, come in, volunteer your time. And we would love that. We would love to have you. There you go. So anyone out there who would want to give um, whatever they have, feel free to message Pop Gori. Um, so again, you're on social media, right? You have Instagram. You're yeah. also on Facebook. Wait. Yeah. yeah, we have, it's mostly Facebook. Okay, there yeah, you go. We have, we have an account called Pop Gori and it's um, Popsicles and Burritos. That's the spelling. Um, okay. And it's on your poster. <laughs> so... Yeah, just let us okay. know. We'd be happy to help you, like, see, you know, think through how you could come help you us. Know, thank you so much, Camille. Your your story is very inspiring, and it, it's really nice to hear that amidst COVID, you know, there's still happiness, there's still joy, and there's, you know, your heart is in it, and I can see that. So thank you so much, Camille. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. And I hope to meet you when this is all um over so stay yes, safe come have a popsicle with us oh, on actually, our store. yeah yeah for sure <laughs> all right so thank you so much um thank stay you. safe bye bye thanks erica okay so that was our um last guest for today again her name is Camille she is the owner of Pop Gory a popsicle shop that turned into a homeless shelter in Quezon City so today was actually very I, I don't know it, it just warms my heart uh, to, to see all of these initiatives and these projects that are being done in our country and it's just really nice to see that we're all coming together and you know helping each other out I mean we do need to try to help each other out especially during this time so I hope everyone enjoyed today's um, episode if you want to contact these um, people uh, I will um, share their um, social media sites on my Facebook page so watch out for that but again thank you I would like to thank everyone um, who was here on the show today everyone um, so we had uh, go the Go Bike Project we had Project Wi-Fi and of course Camille from Pop Glory thank you guys so much for sharing your story stay tuned for the next episode only here on Z81 Radio Manila